Hey, welcome to the Lesson 5 review. We're going to go over Lessons 5.1 and 5.2, the Evolution Tool. Uh, so you're going to want to have access to those materials, the worksheet uh, and the Evolution Tool. The goals that we have uh, at this point were to be able to describe how uh, pigment molecules are produced in the skin, uh, why are folate and vitamin D important, uh, how skin pigmentation is related to levels of UV light in a region, and then to explain the variations, ecology, and interactions between them for the evolution of human skin pigmentation. Remember, as you are working along with, uh, in this video, work at your own pace. Uh, your health and the health of your family comes first. Uh, stop and pause the video, rewind as often as you need to. Take notes wherever uh, you find that it's necessary. Reach out to others to talk through your work, to ask questions, uh, and then summarize and explain your thinking. It's a really uh, powerful process uh, for learning. We're going to go with Lesson 5.1 first, which is the Evolution of Human Skin Pigmentation Worksheet. You can see the five questions that were listed in 5.1, uh, which are very tightly related to the goals uh, that I just reviewed. So identifying what melanin is, uh, talking about what uh, folate and vitamin D are and why they're important, what they do for the body and developing baby, um, how light skin color balances the needs for vitamin D and folate, how dark skin balances the needs for vitamin D and folate, and then the type of environment that we would expect to find darker skin uh, and lighter skin. So first here we have melanin, which is a pigment molecule. It's involved in skin pigmentation as well as hair and eye color. Uh, if you go a little bit more in depth in that, you could talk about the melanocytes and how the skin pigmentation is produced. Uh, you can talk about how melanin uh, can be produced temporarily uh, through sun exposure in some circumstances, uh, but Ultimately, what we need to understand is that melanin is a pigment molecule that is involved in skin pigmentation. Vitamin D is involved in the absorption of calcium, which is uh, related to bone strength. Um, people who have uh, a shortage of vitamin D uh, are going to develop brittle bones. Uh, this includes a disease that is known as rickets in children. Uh, folate is a B vitamin, uh, B9. Uh, and it's involved in red and white blood cell development. Folate's especially important in fetal development um, uh, for, for pregnant women. Uh, when you have an insufficient amount of folate, this can result in birth defects such as spina bifida uh, and anencephaly, uh, which is fatal. We looked at uh, light skin pigment, which is better able to absorb uh, UVB rays. Uh, so that means that there's more vitamin D produced uh, you'll have, however, um, if you have high UV concentrations, that means that there's going to be more uh, folate that is destroyed. If there's dark skin pigmentation, there, that's going to block the UVB rays. So a person with dark skin pigmentation is less likely or less able to produce vitamin D, um, but it also protects the folate much better from those UV rays, uh, so less of that is destroyed. Uh, that means that in high UV environments, darker skin is more advantageous than lighter skin, whereas in the low UV environments, uh, lighter skin is more advantageous. You'll recognize these images here to the right that show um, the vitamin D absorption relative to uh, folate destruction uh, in the amount of UV rays. Okay, so that takes us uh, from Lesson 5.1 to Lesson 5.2, which was the evolution tool where you take that information that we learned from 5.1 and apply it to uh, explaining the evolution of human skin pigmentation. The first thing that we're going to look at is the uh, front page of that worksheet, which is this graphic organizer. You have your columns, which are the uh, ecology, we have variation, the interactions between those two, and then the gene pool frequency. Our ecology here, um, we are looking at a high UV environment, so that means there's um, a high quantity of UV radiation. The factors that affect survival and reproduction have been pre-filled for you. We have skin uh, produces vitamin D when exposed to UV. 
uh, and then folate is destroyed. We have the three variations of lighter, medium, and darker skin pigmentation. So the interactions that we see between those is going to be that lighter skin in a high UV environment produces plenty of vitamin D, however folate is destroyed. Medium skin pigmentation is going to produce plenty of vitamin D, but the folate will be somewhat protected. And finally, in a high UV environment, darker skin pigmentation is going to produce enough vitamin D and the folate is protected. So looking to see how that plays out in frequency, uh, gene frequency over time. Remember time one, time two, and time three are the generations. So we start off with 50-50, say there's 50% lighter skin, 50% darker skin. By the next generation in a high UV environment, you're gonna see that there is an increase. And this is just represented by an arbitrary uh, number, but it shows what the general trend would be. So instead of putting a percentage down, I have included just a pie chart that represents uh, an increased amount. And time three, you'll see that it is increased even further, um, showing that there is more uh, of the dark skin pigmentation in the gene pool frequency. Now, if we take this and shift it over to a low UV environment, uh, we're going to look at the same things. Ecology, variation are the same. Skin production of vitamin D, uh, folate destruction by UV radiation. The variations are lighter, medium, and darker pigmentation. So in a low UV environment, we're going to see that there is going to be enough vitamin D produced and folate's not destroyed. Medium skin pigmentation is going to produce some vitamin D and folate is not destroyed. Darker skin pigmentation, however, in a low UV environment does not produce enough vitamin D. The folate is still protected. So again, when we look at our gene pool frequency, we can see that we start off in our first generation with 50-50, 50% lighter, 50% darker. We see that the darker skin pigment, uh, pigmentation is decreasing over time uh, because uh, there is, uh, the folate is protected, but there's not enough vitamin D that is produced. So let's look at the explanation of variation. You can see that the darker, medium, and lighter skin pigmentation, it is going to be based on a, um, a combination of genes. This is called polygenic inheritance, poly meaning many. Um, these genes are working together to produce the skin pigmentation. So the variation uh, includes darker pigmentation, medium pigmentation, and lighter skin pigmentation. For the ecology, we see that UV is needed to produce vitamin D. So we talked about vitamin D synthesis, how when the UV radiation occurs, uh, it's exposed to the UV light. And you can see in this graphic uh, on the right here, a very basic breakdown of it, uh, that UV light reacts with an enzyme that then uh, creates uh, this, what they call a pre-vitamin D, then over a series of cycles is uh, developed into the vitamin D structure. Uh, however, in high, v, high UV radiation, uh, folate molecules are destroyed. And you can see that here on the lower right-hand side, there's a store of folate uh, in the surface of the skin. UV radiation comes in and the uh, folate molecule is destroyed. Both vitamin D and folate are important. Uh, for the body, they are essential. Folate is essential for the development of uh, babies. We talked about spina bifida and anencephaly. If we have uh, low, uh, if we have too little folate, if we don't have enough vitamin D, we're looking at uh, other uh, health problems that can occur. Uh, so the combination of the two can be a really uh, severe health issues, if not even fatal in some cases. When we look at the interaction. Um, skin pigmentation influences the production of vitamin D, the destruction of folate, high UV environments, uh, darker skin pigmentation is going to have better protection from the folate destruction, uh, and still be able to produce enough vitamin D. Low UV environments, however, um, lighter skin is able to produce more vitamin D uh, with uh, limited folate destruction. Medium skin pigmentation works most effectively in medium UV light, and when we're talking about most effective, uh, we're talking about that balance of vitamin D production uh, and minimizing the folate destruction. So in summary, skin pigmentation patterns around the world 
are an example of evolution in response to the UV ray exposure over time. Skin pigmentation is related to folate and vitamin D levels in the body. The sunlight is needed for the production of vitamin D, but it also destroys folate. So there's that balance that occurs. And then patterns of lighter and darker skin pigmentation around the world balances that need uh, for folate and vitamin D. So coming to the end here, checking our understanding, we described how pigment molecules are produced in the skin. We explained uh, why folate and vitamin D are important. We described how skin pigmentation is related to levels of UV lights in different regions. We also explained the variations of pigmentation, the ecology, uh, and the interactions between those for the evolution of human skin pigmentation. Your task at this point is to complete the learning tracker for lesson five. Uh, and from there, you'll move on to uh, applying what we've learned about evolution through the course of the previous lessons uh, to explain other examples in lesson six. Thank you so much for your time and attention and all of the hard work that you're doing. Uh, take care of yourself, stay, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next time.